Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries, coming to you live from my study. I sung a few songs, and now I'm wanting to get into the Word of God. I feel like not only am I preaching to you out there who may be watching, but I know I'm preaching to myself also. And I don't know how long I'll be into the Word, but we're going to preach the Word, this infallible Word of God. Amen. And I know there's some nuggets in here that God has for you. Amen. Just like he, he had it for me. And I'm going to be going from uh, Revelations chapter 2 and starting at verse 1. Amen. And the title of my sermon is The Church Needs to Repent and Come Back to Their First Love for Revival. Amen. We need revival, not just a series of meetings. We need a Holy Ghost revival in these last days we're living in. So we're going to go, and we're going to go with Revelations chapter 2, starting at verse 1. It says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, talking about Jesus the Messiah. This is the glorified Messiah that John the Revelator seen. I know your works, oh, who walks, oh, I'm sorry, who holds the stars of the right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands or seven golden candelabras. I know your works and your labor, your patience in them that cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars, and you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. Amen. A lot of people, they start out strong. They start out for Jesus. They get saved. They get sanctified. Amen. Filled with God's Spirit. They become a new creature. They become born again, the new creation in God. Amen. And they're full on fire. Amen. Gun ho for Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. But time has taken a toll on them and it gets away from us and we become complacent if we're not careful with the salvation that Christ has given us. Amen. We, we, uh, God has called us to do a work in the ministry or called us to do a, a singing or, or a, a, a prayer warrior or whatever calling you may have. Amen. Do you see your intense uh, desire as you once had it? Your one first loved. Are you on fire as you once was? Amen. Do you feel the passion of God still as strong as it once was? Amen. It says, it says, who are apostles and have not and have found them liars, you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have the, uh, this I have this against you. You have left your first love. Remember, therefore, where you are fallen. Amen. And if you're walking and not close to Christ, amen, you're holding on to the world and trying to hold on to the things of God, that makes you a transgressor. And the way of a transgressor is hard. Amen. Let me tell you, we must repent and say, Lord, help us. Let us do your first love. Somehow something's come away. Lord, that has taken me away from the cross. Amen. That's taken me away, Lord, from following close to your presence. And somehow, Lord, we have backed off. Somehow, Lord, we've got sidetracked. Somehow, Lord, we have left our first love. Amen. Do you have a fire and a passionate desire to follow Christ as you did when you first got saved? Amen. When the ministry was young, when your conversion was young, when you was a babe in Christ and got transformed, amen, by the renewing of the Spirit of God that, that birthed in you a new creation, amen. Amen. Are you still following uh, closely to the Lord or has troubles and trials and things come your way. Amen. That have had you somehow get weary and well doing. Amen. And, you, and you've kind of found yourself slack concerning, amen, how you serve God. Amen. You don't believe it as close as it used to be. Somehow, amen, you've let the oil leak a little out. Somehow you find yourself leaving your first love. Amen. Something else has tried to come in its place. So far, God, you know, we, we have good intentions on doing good and serving God, but 
oftentimes things come up in our life. Uh, amen. And they distract us from the worship of God. They distract us from getting along with God and praying and seeking His Word uh, and leering from a voice from heaven. Uh, somehow, sometime, you know, God is concerned about His relationship with His people. He wants to be first and foremost in your life. Uh, amen. He won't want a part of you. He wants all of you. Uh, no wonder the Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. The Bible says the church at Ephesus had lost their first love. Amen. And I believe that's like the church of today. Amen. Many times they've lost their first love. Amen. There's times I've had to straighten this old boy out. Amen. And say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I've not spent enough time in prayer. Lord, I see myself getting cold. Lord, I see other things trying to compete for your attention and your affections in my life, God. Amen. Help me, Lord, to come back to my first love. Help you to come back to your first love. Sadly, the church has walked mostly away from God. Amen. We see the things that's going on in church. Amen. Most churches don't even preach the cross, the burial, the death, and the resurrection. Amen. A lot of them are preaching prosperity. A lot of people, are, they're preaching uh, just do what's right in your own eyes. Amen. Some churches have let the abominable and the filth of homosexuality come into their life, the church and destroy it and defile the house of God. Amen. And they, God is when Ichabod wrote over the door. Amen. The spirit of the Lord has departed. Amen. People need to repent and come back and do their first love. Amen. God is wanting to send revival to his church. God is trying to wake some people up. Amen. He told me to preach a revival service. Amen. Don't you know what you have to repent? Be, be revived. You must repent. Uh, amen. You must say, Lord, help me. Uh, Lord, something else is going on and I've uh, got sidetracked. Somehow I'm not as close as I used to be. Uh, somehow the fiery passion that you put in my heart uh, ain't as strong as it once was. Uh, help us, God, to get back to you. Uh, amen. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. Uh, help us, Lord, to get a hold of the altars again uh, and pray through until we be endued uh, with power from on high. It says, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have lost your first love. You have left your first love. Not lost it. You left it. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen and repent and do your first works. Amen. That knocks once in grace, always in grace right out of there. We must repent and do our first works. Paul said, should we live in sin that grace should abound? God forbid. Amen. We need to walk uprightly before the Lord. Amen. He says, repent and do thy first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Uh, amen. God will. God is not pleased with the backslider. God is not pleased with the lukewarm church. Uh, God is not pleased with those who have got once that were on fire for the Lord, once who were living holy and close to the Lord. Amen. Once who could, could hear his voice. Uh, amen. But they followed away like Peter uh, when Jesus was taken to Caiaphas. They followed him uh, from a distance. Uh, and when you follow Christ from a distance, it's hard to, to imitate Christ. It's hard to walk uprightly. It's hard to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Amen. God is not, beware, God is not mocked. Whatsoever we shall sow, that shall we also reap. Amen. Whether we sow into the flesh, we'll reap corruption, or whether we sow into the spirit, we'll reap life everlasting. Amen. And let me tell you what I want to sow to the spirit. I say, God, revive me. God, stir up the gift of God. God in me. Stir up. Amen. I know troubles and problems come. I know life can kick you down. Amen. But no wonder Jesus said, come unto me, all you labor heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon thee. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my burden is, uh, for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I take that back. Forgive me. And then St. John chapter 14 and verse 15. It says, if, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father and he will give you a helper or another comforter and he will abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive 
because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells within you, and he will be in you. He said, I will not leave you orphans. I won't leave you mothers. I will come to you. Hallelujah. And he said, a little while longer, the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Hallelujah. Amen. At that day, you will know that I am in the, my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And he who has my commandment has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved of my Father, and I will be loved of him, and will manifest myself unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not enough to study the Word of God. It's not enough to, to believe the Word of God. It's not enough to pray. It's not enough uh, to worship. Amen. We must be obedient to what the Scripture says. Amen. If Christ tells us to love Him with all our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, we better do it. And to love our neighbor as ourself. Amen. If He tells us to walk up broadly before Him. Amen. And, and uh, shun the very appearance of evil. Amen. And glory to God. He said, my people people will come called by my name shall humble themselves and pray then I'll hear from heaven amen let me tell you we need to humble ourselves we need to pray and seek the face of God amen we need to come back to our first love I say Lord send revival in my soul Lord set me on fire let me burn and blaze for you Jesus amen let me not forget the wonderful things the Lord that you've done for me how you've already delivered me and saved my soul and set me free amen glory to God you set me free. You broke every addiction, every chain at the cross of Calvary. I held up my hands unto you and I said, Lord, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. Amen. And the blood of Christ that from the cross fell on my chains of shackles of sin and tore it asunder, destroyed the kingdom of darkness and the power that it had over my life. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Let me not forget the blessings of God. Let me not forget that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever uh, amen Lord let me live in a way that your spirit will be pleased with me uh, Lord that you'll get the glory out of my life uh, Lord that it won't be uh, something I won't be something you have to be ashamed of uh, amen I pray God help me uh, live according to your blessed word but Lord more than study the word of God more than worship uh, more than pray which is all good amen Lord let me be obedient obedient to the word of God. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, be faithful. If you love me, Jesus is saying, amen, do what I tell you to do in the word. Amen. Be faithful. Be obedient. Amen. Be obedient to the spirit. It's not enough just to read the word of God. It's not enough just to have the word of God in your heart. You must obey the spirit of God. You must obey the word of Christ. And live according to his word. Amen. Let me tell you, I don't want to be no hypocrite. Amen. I don't want to sit there and look like I'm living it before others. And God Almighty see my lifestyle and know how I live when no one else is around. Amen. What would it do if I played a part and played the fool? What would it profit me? Amen. To play a fool and in the lost, in the end be damned. What would it profit me? Amen. To play a fool. Amen. To try to put some hood with somebody and to believe and I'm a child of God. Amen. If I'm living into the world, if I'm holding on to the world, if I'm cussing like the world, if I'm looking at secret sins at night, amen. If I'm cheating on my wife, if I'm cheating in my heart, amen. If I'm looking at pornography, if I'm listening to the filth of the world, amen. What would it do? What would it gain? And what would it help if I gain the whole world and lose my soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? God is wanting his church to come back to its first love. Amen. The judgment will begin at the house of God. The church needs to repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I've been preoccupied. I've did too many things with my time. I've not given you time in prayer. I've not given you what you want. I've not been obedient to your voice. Lord, I follow you from a distance or else I've been haphazardly holding on to the world and trying to hold on to you. The way of a transgressor is hard. And let me tell you, transgressors will burst hell wide open. You can backslide on God. Amen. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. 
You don't backslide just usually overnight. Amen. Little by little, you give in. Little by little, ha hallelujah, you conform to this world. Amen. That's why the churches, amen, they bring in their rock music. That's why they bring in their uh, uh, stage lights. Amen. You go and they have it. It's like a big concert. Amen. It's like the world. They look like the world. They talk like the world. They act like the world. They brought the world in the church because the, the word of God has been found, amen, been too hard that they won't give in and serve the Lord. They have turned and stiff-necked. They have walked away from God and the Spirit of the Lord has left their churches and entertainment is a false, uh, is a false, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Entertainment is a false supplement for the Spirit of God. Hey man, there's nothing in entertainment. Hey man, give me the spirit of God. Give me those who want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. God is looking for those people to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Am I bashing music? No. Hey man, but if it sounds like ACDC, uh, hey man, and it kind of sounds a little gospel twang, uh, uh, ACDC, and, and they throw a little gospel word in there. Uh, hey man, the Bible says, be you sure your sins will find you out. The Bible says, says, come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord. Those who know the good do good and to do it not to him it is sin. Amen. And then you got those Christians uh, who say they're professing Christians. Uh, amen. And they're shacked up together. Amen. They're not married. Amen. Committing fornication. Amen. And going against the word of God. Amen. And some pastors told you it's all right. Let me tell you, if the word of God says it's wrong and the word of God says it's sin, it's It'll be sin forevermore. Amen. I don't care what tides of time come. What society says. Amen. Let the God be true and every man a liar. Hallelujah. I'm talking about revival. I'm talking about some deep things. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Amen. And God has been dealing with me. Amen. Lord, help me. Amen. To follow closely to you as the deer pants after the water brooks. Lord, let me pant after you. Amen. Let me follow after you, God. Let me pursue your heart. Let me pursue your spirit. Let me pursue your desires for my life. Help me to deny myself daily and take up my cross and follow you. Amen. Glory to God. Let me do whatever it takes. I want the Holy Ghost to burn and blaze in my life. I want the Spirit of God to have a chance to rule and reign over me. Amen. And take me and to soar me into deeper depths of God. To soar me into new heights of the Spirit. Amen. And there is an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that God has got for His church and continual outpourings and times of refreshing. Amen. Let me tell you, you may be going through some droughts. You may be fighting some battles right now. God is one to pour out a blessing on you that you cannot contain or even fathom. He's wanting to open up rivers in your desert. Amen. And bless you spiritually. Come get a drink of this life-giving water. Hold on one moment. I'm just going to get a napkin. Amen. Hold on. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let the devil tell you that you're meant for less. Uh, amen. That God has given up on you. You may have fell down. You may have faltered. Uh, amen. But get up in Jesus' name. Have an advocate with Jesus Christ uh, and say, Lord, restore unto me uh, the joy of thy salvation. It's not time to throw in a towel. It's time we catch on fire for God. It's time we proclaim to this world that Jesus Christ still saves sinners. Amen. Who I, We have been saved and set free and what he's done for me he'll do for you amen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but the world through him might be saved yes I say again the church needs to return from its for to its first love 
love. Cast out the idols in the life. Amen. Some people have been following Christ from a distance. They've become preoccupied. Too many things has took up their time. They haven't got alone with God. They haven't heard a word from the Lord in a long time. They haven't got into His Word. Amen. They haven't obeyed His Spirit. They haven't obeyed His Word. Amen. They give Him lip service, but their heart is far from Him. Amen. They backslid a long time ago, sitting in the pews, getting cold and indifferent, compromising with the Word of God, compromising with the Spirit of God, letting the God of this world, amen, drag them around, amen, taking them places they shouldn't go, listen to filthy music they shouldn't listen to, watching pornography, amen, and all kind of other sins, amen, let me tell you what, God is not mocked, you'll reap whatever you sow, whether you reap unto the Spirit, uh, to the flesh you'll reap corruption or damnation. If you sow unto the Spirit, you'll reap life and life everlasting. I want to sow to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. St. Mark, chapter 12, verse 28. For one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, talking about Jesus, asked him, which is the greatest commandment of all. Woo. Jesus answered, The first of all commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord. Listen to this. You, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Are you loving the Lord with all your heart? Or are you just giving Him lip service? And your heart is far from him. He's called you to do a work, and yet you've denied to want to do it. Uh, amen. You've sat around long enough. Uh, when are you going to do the calling of God that he's placed in your heart? Uh, how many times has a nail-scarred hand's got to reach to you in love and mercy and try to send you correction? Uh, but you've been a disobedient child. You've turned your back on him. you walked away. Uh, and God is needing you to get up and do the work of Christ. He's got a whole harvest out there. It's ripe, but the labors are few. How many times does he have to keep calling your name and you refuse to do the calling? Let me tell you, if you hide the Lord's talent, amen, hallelujah, amen, in hell you'll lift up your eyes if you die and not do the will of God. No, to do good, to do it not, it is sin. And to disobey Christ and his commandments, to disobey Christ and his will for your life, it is sin. I don't know why I got off on that, but I did. Jesus answered, first of all, the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. That's not a half-hearted service. That's a whole heartfelt service with all your strength. This is the first commandment, Jesus told that young scribe. And the second is like unto this. And God's people who say they can't love their neighbor, can't love their enemy, can't love those who gossip about you, can't love the... Let me tell you, there's something lacking in your heart. And it's a fulfilled perfection, which is Christ. Amen. You need to get on the altar and say, Lord, get a hold of my heart where I can forgive my enemies. Get a hold of my heart where I can forgive those who hurt me. Get a hold of my heart, Lord. Amen. We don't need to forget. Amen. But God, get a hold of my heart. I don't want nothing in my heart that is against somebody. Amen that'll keep me weighed down. Amen. That'll keep me from getting my prayers answered. That'll keep me from getting a move of God. That'll keep me from getting revival. I don't want something that's going to bring resentment in my heart and bitterness, Lord, for that's not of you. It's of the devil. It's of the enemy. Amen. And the Bible says neither give place to the devil. Amen. Let me tell you, you need to purge it out of your heart. 
You need to forgive these people. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. I had to forgive my dad, a deadbeat dad. Amen. I had all in my heart against him. Amen. And God told me, call him up and forgive him. The hardest thing I ever had to do, one of the hardest, let me take that back, was to tell my dad, a guy who never was for there for me, that I forgave him. And when I forgave him, there was a healing in my soul. The bitterness, the hate, amen, the depression left me. And Christ come in and gave me peace. And I had 15 good years with my dad. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For there is, is no greater commandment than these. So the scribe said, well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth. For there is one God, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all thy heart, and with all thy understanding, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, to love one's neighbor as oneself, is more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Hallelujah. Think about that. Now when Jesus saw this, he answered wisely. He said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God. But after no one else dared ask him a question. We are to love the Lord with all our mind, all our soul, all our strength, all our heart. Give him a desired uh, focus on our life. Let him be chief first. Uh, amen. For God is a jealous God. Uh, amen. Sometimes if we're not careful, we put other things ahead of God and that becomes our idol. Let me tell you, the devil's trying to hoodwink some of you. Some of you, he's causing you to get your eyes off Christ. Uh, you've got it on the storm or you've got it on something else or you've put something instead of where he used to be. Uh, amen. Once Christ was your all in all, now you find he be in third, fourth, fifth. Amen. Let me tell you, you need to repent and come back to your first love. Amen. And say, God, stir a fiery passion and a desire in my heart like I had when I was first saved, when I was first filled with the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God. Lord, pour out upon me a fresh outpouring. But if you want a revival and you want a fresh anointing, you're going to have to first repent. Through hard times, through sufferings, through anguish, comes spiritual revival. Amen. God will birth in you. When, when a woman's going through birth, it hurts. Amen. I don't ever experience it personally, but it hurts. I've heard them say, amen, they're in anguish, they're suffering. But once they deliver the child, once the anguish is over, they're rejoicing and praising the Lord that it's took place. Amen. And let me tell you, once God is building your character, amen, you go through fiery trials, the storms of life come. That's not when you walk away from God. That's when you draw closer to Him because He's the God of all comfort. Amen. And He's a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. If you'll draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. Amen. Don't walk away. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's not time to say, well, boo-hoo, God doesn't love me. Amen. Christ loves you. The devil will tell you a lie after lie after lie after lie if you listen to him. But God loves you. Even through the hard times, God loves you. Give him a praise. Give him glory. Amen. Because if he takes you through the storm, he's going to take you through it. If you'll trust in the Lord and keep your eyes on him, amen, he'll bring you through the storm. Don't get Peter sidetracked. Don't look it to the left and to the right. Amen. Glory to God. The, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Walking for Christ is a faith route. We must keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Amen. Keep it focused in the word. Keep it focused in prayer. Keep it focused in worship and give God the glory and let him have glory out of your life. Amen. Don't walk to the way of the world. Amen. Stay out of the bars. Amen. Don't you be smoking. Don't be doing no drugs. Lay off the devil's play toys. Amen. It'll grip you again in sin and bondage. It'll pull you away from God. If you're walking with ungodly friends, amen, it's time you separate yourself from them. Amen. Let me tell you, you live a life of Christ before them. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you fall in and be partakers of the other man's sins. You live a Christ-like life before them and let God minister to their heart and bring them to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. You don't give up on them. Pray for them. But don't you
you go to the bars. Uh, don't you go listening, walking around, listening. Your, your ears is not a garbage dump. You don't have to listen to the cuss words because if it gets in your ears, it can get to your mind and get to your heart. And before you know it, you're speaking like the world. Don't listen to the things of the world. Don't look on the things of the world. Amen. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your mind on Christ. Keep your ears on the word of God and his voice and what he speaks to you. I'm preaching revival to the church. Come back to your first, repent, and come back to your first love. And I'm preaching to me too. Ezekiel. Thirty-six and seventeen. I'm sorry, thirty-six and twenty-five. Ezekiel thirty-six and twenty-five it says, "I will sprinkle sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. You want to be cleansed? Put Christ first. Say, Lord, forgive me. I have slacked." And I have backed down from doing your will, God. I've let other things become idols in the place of you. Lord, I acknowledge my sin and I repent. Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me a pure and a clean heart. Help me, Lord, to walk uprightly before you and to do my first works. So I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Amen. Amen. When we get saved, Christ takes away that old stony, sinful heart. He puts a new heart of flesh in us. Amen. The Spirit of God makes us a new creature, a new creation in God. We are become born again, regenerated. Amen. A glory to God. We, we are made a new creation in God. The old man is done away with. Behold, all things are made new. Amen. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We must crucify this flesh. We must take up, deny ourselves daily and take up our cross and follow him. That's how we do the commandments. That's how the Lord knows we love him is by our obedience to his word, by our obedience to the spirit, by the obedience in what he tells you to do. God is looking for people to be obedient. God is looking for people to put him first and above all things. You got to put him before your wife. You got to put him before your mother. You got to put him before your father. You got to put him before your husband. You got to put him before your children. Christ must be number one. I'm preaching revival, repentance, and come back to your first love. There's help for the backslider. Healing for the backslider. Amen. We're going to go to Isaiah 57 and starting at verse 14. And one shall say, heap it up, heap it up, prepare the way. Take the stumbling block out of the way of my people. God is wanting to remove some stumbling blocks from you. Amen. But yet you're still, amen, if you're not careful, you're walking in darkness and not walking in the light. Amen. You keep stumbling over the same bad habits. Keep stumbling over the same old sin. No wonder the Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. we got to run with patience. Amen. We've got to fight the fight of faith to lay hold of eternal life. Amen. Let me tell you, if you're backslidden today, God allows second chances. God allows third, fourth, fifth. But you got to come back to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I repent. I believe that you are my Savior. Amen. I believe you died on the cross. On the third day, you rose again and ascended unto the right hand of God. I'm going to confess you before men. Confession is made unto salvation. And those who call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. 
God is able to make the step, stumbling blocks in your life, the things that's keeping you hindered from God, that's keeping you from getting a breakthrough, the things that are keeping you from getting revival, the things that are keeping you bound. Amen. God is able to break these stumbling stones and making stepping blocks uh, and ste uh, to step above the problem. Amen. Step through the problem. Amen. And get over this mountain that's standing in your way. Uh, amen. That's keeping you from God. If you'll have faith as a little mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain. It'll be plucked asunder, removed, uh, and cast into the sea. Uh, amen. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. Uh, amen. Amen. Whose name is holy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Be ye holy, even as I am holy, Jesus said. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who is a contrite and a humble spirit. Those who acknowledge their sin. I'm even talking about those who profess to be Christians that's lost their first love. Their passion is not what it used to be. Amen. Somehow they've let the fire dim down or the fire has gone out. Amen. They've got lukewarm and cold and indifferent in their walk with Christ. Amen. They've allowed other things to come in and occupy and, and take Christ's place that's number one in their life. Amen. They've, they've, uh, they've settled down and become lazy and complacent in their walk with Christ. And the devil's come in and moved in. The world has come in and moved in. Amen. Where that space you had in Christ is number one. You filled it with something else uh, that is of the world or something of trivia, frivolous matter that doesn't matter when it comes to eternity and to your soul. Jesus said, repent and do your first works. Come back to your first love. Or I'll remove the candlestick out of the way. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, no sin is going to end the kingdom, kingdom of God. I don't know about you. I don't want to die lost. I don't want to hear him uh, uh, say, Lord, I don't want to say, Lord, we've, uh, uh, we've uh, prophesied in your name. Lord, we've cast out devils. Lord, we've healed people in your name. I don't want to hear him say that and then us to say that and then say, depart from me. Uh, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, glory to God. I want to be one. He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou good and obedient servant. Amen. I don't want to be one that, that uh, thought they were doing right, but they had Christ as had, they they left Christ uh, as their first love a long time ago, and they never repented and made it right with God. Amen. Let me tell you what people want to come to the cross, but they don't want to get on the cross and die out to their self, die out to sin, die out to the flesh. Amen. They want to keep walking on and doing their own thing and giving God lip service, walking do the things of the world, be partakers of the world. Hold on to cigarette smoking. Hold on to pot smoking. Hold on to drinking. Hold on to gambling. Hold on to their lust. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And Christ is wanting you to be set free. Amen. But if you're holding on to the world and holding on to flesh and still doing the desires of that old sinful man, amen, you need to be set free. Hallelujah. You need to come back to an altar and say, Lord, forgive me of my wanderings. Forgive me of my backsliding slidings. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. This is what the high and lofty one says. One, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. And him who has a contrite and humble spirit, who has a broken heart and a humble spirit, a broken heart and a humble spirit, because they see the offenses they've done to God by not putting him first, by leaving their first love, by not seeking his face continually, by not praying without ceasing, by not reading the word of God, by not going to church, by not being faithful in all matters, by not visiting the sick, by not going to prison, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, by not doing what God says in his word word to do it says to revive the spirit of the humble hey man lord help me always to be humble before i could preach this message to you it had to go to me first lord wants to revive his church he wants us to become a mighty army 
Amen. He wants us to come to the valley of dry bones that he sees his church to be. And he wants to breathe on his church the Spirit of God and send his church the valley of that dry bones to bring chenoos and flesh and bring life into that army again that it can stand up and fight the fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. Amen. So long they've been in the valley of dry bones because they backslid on God. Amen. They walked away from his commandments and not kept his word. Amen. Let me tell you, God is wanting to breathe again. Amen. And bring the dry bones back to life. He's wanting to make a mighty army. Amen. But it's up to you what you do with this Jesus. What you do with salvation. Hallelujah. And say, Lord, help me. Amen. I want to give my all to you. Amen. Christ gave his all. He gave his best. He took your place on the cross. Hallelujah. Don't you know he expects the same from us that we'll give our best and walk according to his word? Yes, we may stumble. Yes, we may fail. But have an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous and say, Lord, those who confess their sins will be forgiven of their sins. Amen. And forsake their sins. Repent. That means repentance means turn from sin and turn to God. To revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Lord, send the Holy Ghost and fire down on your people. Lord, let us quit backbiting one another. Let us quit tearing down one another. Amen. And let us love one another as the Lord loved the church. Let us love each other as Jesus loves us. Amen. Hallelujah. Neither give place to the devil. Amen. Let us bind together with cords of love and compassion as a firm foundation laid on Christ. Hallelujah. There's not a black church, white church, Asian church, yellow church. There's only one church. Amen. It's the church of the living God. Hallelujah. We are his body and the Christ is the headship of the church. Hallelujah. Let us act according to it. Live to it. I don't care what color you are. I love you like Jesus. When I got saved, color, I would come colorblind. I love everybody. We all come from Adam and Eve. Why can't the church of the living God get together and love each other in spirit and in truth and unity and let the power of God fall that we can have another day of Pentecost. Amen. That we'll hear the mighty mushing wind again and see the clothes and tongues of fire fall upon your people again, God. Store unto us the joy of our salvation. Burn bright and clear in us, God. Help us, Lord. We need you more than ever in this evil day we live in. Help us, God, to humble ourselves and pray to repent of our sins. Amen. And come back to our first love that you can send revival down in our hearts hallelujah I'm almost done it says this in Psalms 80 let your hand be upon me your right hand let the hand of God touch you and you'll never be the same amen let him bless you you'll never be the same let the hand of God anoint you. You'll never be the same. Upon the Son of Man whom you have made strong for yourself. The Son of Man is a messianic title for Jesus Christ. Then we will not turn back from you. We won't walk back from you. Lord, we won't backslide on you no more. Hallelujah. We will not turn, then we will not turn back from you. Revive us. And we will call upon your name. Revive us, O oh Lord. Help us, Lord. Stir up the gift of God. Stir up the love of God in our hearts to come back full wholeheartedly to you. Amen. To love each other as, we, as you love the church, Lord. To love one another. Lord, I pray, let us fall head over heels all in love with Jesus Christ again. Let the Holy Ghost burn and blaze in our life. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would do above and beyond what we could think or even ask, Lord. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Cause your face to shine on us, Lord. Touch us by your hand. 
Lord, I pray, restore us. Amen. Those who call on your name, revive us. Let your face shine on us once again. God, that you can be uh, pleased with us. Amen. That we won't walk in shame. Amen. But we won't walk in disgrace. Amen. But we'll be the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Amen. Let us take the light of this gospel to the lost. Amen. And tell them that Jesus Christ loves them and wants to set them free of their sins. It's not his will that any would perish and go to hell. Amen. He wants to set them free. Amen. The thief, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the devil. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Restore us, O oh Lord. God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Lord, cause your face to shine on this church. Cause your face to shine on the body of Christ. Lord, I pray, let us come back on humble, bended knees, repenting, Lord. Lord, we need to come back to our first love. Lord, we need to do our first works, God. Help us to deny ourselves daily and take up our cross and follow you. My last sermon of scripture. Psalms 51. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. God doesn't hate you. God loves you. The devil tells you God don't love you. But God does love you, lost man. He wants you to come to the cross and get saved and redeemed. Hallelujah, to give your life and set you free from the shackles of sin. Amen, to what you keep going back to that you can't stop yourself from doing the drugs, the alcohol, the fornication, amen, the homosexuality. You can't stop yourself from doing perversion. Christ can set you free and make you free indeed. But you got to come to the cross and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I'm going to confess you before men that you are my Savior and believe it from the heart. Lord, I believe you rose again from the dead and ascended at the right hand of God, taking the blood of Christ and putting it on the mercy seat for me. Hallelujah. And I believe, Lord, amen, confession is made unto salvation. I'm going to confess you before men. And those who call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. The church needs to repent. They've fallen from their first love. Amen. They've got themselves wrapped up in the worldly things. Amen. They've let things come between them and God. They need to repent. Amen. We need to repent and see God move in the churches, to see God move in our countries, to see God shake the world for Jesus and see the Spirit of the Lord fall again and bring another Pentecost at any cost. Amen. Let us get in the center of God's will and be used of Him to get hold of the plow and go forward and not look back. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Amen. I'm going to pray for uh, uh, people to work in God's harvest. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Amen. The sin will always be before you. Those who Christians who have unconfessed sin, amen, they'll burst hell wide open. Amen. Because Jesus said, if you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. This once in grace, always in grace doctrine is sent from hell. Amen. Paul said that should we live in sin, that grace should abound, God forbid. In another place it says if we do fall, amen, that we crucify uh, the Son of God again, uh, amen, and make him and bring him to an open shame. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. They may be found just when you speak. 
when we confess our sins, when we repent of our sins, amen, when we acknowledge we're not following Christ and not putting him at our first love, we let other things come in the way, uh, amen, we let other things take our take our minds from Christ, uh, amen, and, and let other things uh, inhabit uh, uh, our time with the Lord, uh, amen, and we've called cold and indifferent and lukewarm, uh, amen, we've come complacent, uh, amen, we took Christ and his salvation, amen, as a casual thing. But when we repent, we may be found justified. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Then we're going to go down to seven. Purge me from hiss with, with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness. That the bones you have broken may rejoice. How many times have God got to grievously correct you? Amen. And show you where you've fallen. And you keep falling in the same pitfalls of lust. In the same pitfalls of sin. Amen. And same falling in the world. The pitfalls of the world. Amen. You've allowed things to hinder your walk with Christ. That you've uh, let up on once was sin is no longer sin. And you've come and let it come into your heart and into your life. And you've walked away from God. God's spirit will not always strive with man. He's one to bring revival to his church. But the church must come back to their first love. The church must repent and do their first works before God will send a revival in the church. Judgment will begin at the house of God. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the God ungodly and the sinner appear? Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. This is what revival does. When you repent and say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. I, I've allowed other things to uh, uh, compete for your affections, Lord. Compete for the love I used to have for you. Amen. You're not first in my life, and I acknowledge that, Lord, and I want to make you first in my heart. I want to follow you and have a fervent desire to worship you and be obedient to your word and, and to read your word and, and to worship you as I did when I first got saved. When the first Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, fell on me. Somehow we've got a way. Somehow we've let things get cold and lukewarm and indifferent Lord. Oh God, cleanse us. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. A renew a right spirit or a steadfast spirit in me, within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. You know, if you go on and unconfess sin, and you go on living half holy, to, half heartedly to God and holding on to the world, you can't serve God and mammon. God will take his holy presence from you. God will cause you, amen, to remain in your iniquity. And if you die in that situation, you'll die lost without God. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Restore unto me, Lord, the joy of your salvation. Lord, put a fashion and a, a passion and a fire in my heart. Lord, like I've never had before, help me obey you, God. It's not enough to know your word. I must obey you, Lord, for obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifices and burnt offerings. I've got to come humbly before you, Lord. I want to walk a straight and narrow way, Lord. It says, uphold me with your righteous or generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Maybe that's why you're going through what you're going through. So you can get uh, a repent, come back to your first love, and let God restore you and you can help somebody else that's stumbling along their way with Christ. Amen. That stumble along in their faith. Amen. That their faith's about to be made shipwrecked. But maybe you can help them to overcome. Amen. By telling them that Christ loves them and they need to repent and come back to their first works. I will teach transgressors their ways and sinners shall be converted unto you. 
This is Reverend Sean Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries. I preach my heart out to you. God dealt with me first in this message before I ever preached to you, but he told me my church needs to repent because they've lost their first love. They've not lost it, they left it. I'm sorry. They left their first love. And they need to repent. God wants to send revival. But we're standing in the way of our own breakthrough because we've allowed the spirit of lust. We've allowed envy. We've allowed hatred. We've allowed the flesh to, to control us. We've listened to the voice of the enemy if we're not careful. Instead of listening to God's voice. We need to come out from among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Get your mind off the world. Get your mind off pornography. Quit smoking those cigarettes that are damning your soul. Quit doing the drugs. Uh, amen. Glory to God. Quit living uh, with somebody who is you're not married to, fornicating, and committing sexual perversion with them. Amen. God will judge you, and you'll die lost and go to hell for that. You need to come back to your first works. You may be struggling. You may be depressed, but I read where God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. The devil's trying to distract you. He's trying to get you to lose your first love. Amen. He's trying to steal the joy of the Lord from you. Why? The joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm going to leave this last one with you. As Joshua said, choose you this day who you'll serve. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Lord, revive my soul. Lord, let me come back to you and do my first works. Let me repent. The church needs to repent. Judgment begins at the house of God. The church needs to repent and say, Lord, restore unto me the joy of your salvation and help me, Lord. Lord, I pray. This is Reverend Sean Ferguson for City on the Hill Ministries. I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I preach my heart out. I pray for those who are listening, saved and lost, and those who are struggling with their faith, Lord. God, that you'll speak and minister them in Jesus' name. I ask you, please, subscribe to my YouTube channel, City on the Hill Ministries, Reverend Sean Ferguson. And if you need prayer, just send me a message, and I'll do my best to reach the throne of God. Amen.